morning, right. sisters. We, we literally are have slouched. to slouch down so we can get in. into the frame. We have not vlogged, like properly vlogged, in so long. Cheers. 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 Emma, talk us through your coffee this morning. I'm a simple gal. I get a long black, also known as an Americano, and I <laughs> only have she one shot. The one worst shot. possible coffee Black you can coffee, have. coffee, one shot, not two, because I'm monitoring my caffeine intake. I'm really proud oh, of myself. I got two. I didn't even realize. She's a little baddie. She a little baddie. <laughs> so I got yeah, tell an us. ice long black, dash of oat milk, and one sweetener. And one sweetener. That Guys, is an order. we haven't seen you since Emma and I got our Invisalign Oh my um, god. Off. Off. We, should, uh, we should put little photos in. Of our before and after. So what I got done is in Visalign, I got whitening and I got a little bit of bonding. So it's called composite bonding on the edge, like the edge, mm. the bottom of my um four, three, four front teeth. Mm. So I'll put a little before and after so you guys can see. And you'll put yours. I got a little bit more done in terms of movement. I just noticed some of my, especially my bottom teeth, were moving, and I wanted to like fix it real quick we i also got whitening as part of my invisalign i got bonding on one tooth at the front that i chipped when i was like 18 Adam was in like, a club <laughs> in a club oh my yeah God. it was it Did was I one know? of those oh no you're 18 no yeah um silly moments in life and now i have retainers on the bottom and top which hold same. them in place a lot of people ask what we do to hold them in place yeah. that's what our dentist does we're meant to wear a retainer every night mm. but i don't do that if the dentist Sorry. is watching, I do. <laughs> no, you don't. Do you? <laughs> so, guys, what's been happening? We have renovations to show you in at Crop Shop Boutique. So, we have been renovating the office, which is why we've been a little MIA on here and a little MIA on our podcast. She's We're doing slink. a refresh on the podcast. Mm. We've got Bikini Build, our last challenge for the year starting. So, we have had a lot going on. We have. Then we've had our personal lives. Which <laughs> this is a whole nother pot. We need, like, a proper show, guys, because the we amount do. of stuff that happens day to day, even, that, like, trying to recap is just a lot. Yes. Obviously, Emma's whole journey. Yep. My life is always just... <laughs> <laughs> My life is always just interesting, guys. And, um, yeah, we just miss being on here and just, like, sharing more of the real like what's happening, just lifestyle chatting. stuff and just chatting. Mm. So we are going to try to vlog more. We spend a lot of time like off camera. Yeah, but... we do. But also lately I feel like we've both been so busy. Yeah. Emma's had so much happening. I've had so much happening. I've been doing a bit of travel. Mm. Um, we really have not been seeing each other. It's ever since she decided to get engaged and leave me. Oh. Her lifelong soulmate. <laughs> Rachel's been jet setting off around the joint. I've been doing a little travel here and there. But, yeah, guys, we're just going to take you. We've got a team whip in, like, we've got to leave. So we're going to go to a bit of a do, to a bit of a team meeting, and then we're going to train. I did get a needle yesterday in my arm, so I'm thinking I don't know how much I'm going to be able to do, but we'll figure it out. But, yeah. While Rachel addresses the needle in the arm, one of, like, a really common question we get asked a lot on Instagram, both of us, is are we getting vaccinated for don't want to say it because it's censors on everything but but also like it's just such a controversial topic mm. and we are both just pro choice we think everyone mm. should do um as they please and as they want yeah. we have chosen to get vaccinated um so i've had my first one yesterday emma had hers a week ago mm. and um there's not much to say on it, guys. I yeah. don't think that this is a topic that we can give, <laughs> you know, advice Solicited on. Advice if on. It, it was a personal choice. We are pro-choice. We think everyone should have the yeah. choice to do as they please. Um, but the answer to that is yes. Yeah. So, that is it. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Let's go. Let's go. Hello. So, we haven't shown you guys the, the office in a while. We're making these little breakout areas, so they need a little bit of work, a little bit of love. But we've officially done or moved to all open seating, so there's no one in offices anymore. Everyone sits. Our new meeting room. And we got a new sign. So yeah, there are new meeting rooms up there, and everyone sits here. Hello, team. This is Gina, our new CEO. <laughs> 
leadership team here and then we have the whole squad here and now we're going to show you CSB. Ro working on some beautiful designs. <laughs> All right guys so we're going to have a little look at CSB. CS team. Hey girl. So as you guys can see, lots of changes have happened over the last however long since we've vlogged. But we're about to go in for our team whip, so we'll take you guys for some of that. Welcome back guys. So we had our meeting, finished our coffee, and we had to film a couple of things for Move With Us. Hope you enjoyed the little CSB tour. I'm so proud. It's so little beautiful. baby's growing up guys. And it's all because of you, so thank you so much for your support and love. I love that you guys love activewear as much as we do. So yes. now we are going to do a session from Bikini Build. So we have chosen a full body day. So with Bikini Build 3.0, there is one full body day. And we focus mostly, well, we focus only on back and hammies. And so we're going to take you guys through this workout step by step instructions. One of the best things about this new challenge and how it's been programmed is a lot to do with tempo and how you're performing the exercise, not just what the exercise is. So we'll kind of explain that with each of the exercises we do today, the tempo, the structure of the workout. It just makes it so much more challenging. So and something I love about 3.0 is we focus on one primary movement mm. per um, session. So you'll notice that over the first four weeks, you'll be focusing each session on one specific primary movement, followed by some accessory work. So we really allow for us to build strength um, in that primary movement and focus not just on obviously changing the way we look, but also changing, seeing changes um, in performance in the gym. So something that we're really passionate about and something that we really work towards. You know, we've been training for so long now. It's so much more than just a body goal. It's mm -hmm. how can we progress in all aspects of our lives and performance in the gym is one of them. 100%. So let's get into it. Let's go. So starting with our activation, we have an activation circuit and then we move into our warm up sets for this session. Being that the session is full body, but its primary focuses are your hammies and back, that's what the warm up and activation is going to reflect. So we're starting with some laying hamstring curls using the exercise ball, and then we're going to move to our hip hinges and our banded pull aparts. So with this program, even the activation circuits are rep based with a real focus on more so getting the rep out properly than just doing the rep for the certain amount of time. So with this program, there were two exercise scientists that helped create the program and focus on warm ups and activation. What's really important and what we really wanted to emphasize was that the warm ups suited the, the session. So you'll see that it's a really hip hinge based warm up considering that we are doing a lot of hip hinge movements in this session. And then we're also just going to make sure the upper body, especially the back is nice and warm as well. So for your activation, there's two sets and it's giving us plenty of time to really warm up, become mobile, get that blood flowing and focus the mind to muscle connection on the areas we're about to start working before we jump into our warm up sets. You'll notice we're starting to fart our RDLs and we will do a warm up set at about 50% before moving into our sessions. 
So you'll see Rachel's hips are nice and high. And you can even hear Rachel's breath. She's just at that point where she's not breathless. She can still hold a conversation, but she's her heart is starting to rise and she's starting to get that like slightly breathless sound when she's having a conversation, which is kind of what you want to achieve. You want to be in, in a state of your body starting to wake up and warm up. So we've got two rounds of the activation. Glutes back. And this is going to really aid in the primary focus for today, which is barbell RDLs. Squeezing. You'll see Rachel's really controlling the movement. No flinging the band around, slow release. Every aspect of the movement is controlled and purposefully performed. And honestly guys, I used to be really guilty of not warming up correctly, or not warming up much at all. And in turn, I suffered a little bit of an injury. So, you know, the more I've put into priming myself before working out, the more I'm realizing just how beneficial it is. Something else that was highly requested in this program is cool downs. So we have added cool downs, which are optional there also. So that's warm up done. Now we're gonna get into our warm up set of RDLs. So we're going into our first warm up set, doing some barbell RDLs. So with our first warm up set, we have 10 reps at about 50% effort. So you're not going too heavy. Rachel's arm is a little bit sore, so she's going fairly light with her first warm-up set just to, you know, warm into the movement. So with a barbell RDL, it's honestly one of the most incredible movements for your glutes and hamstrings if you perform it correctly. You really want to focus on your spine nice and neutral, and you'll see that with Rachel, and pushing your glutes back. So you're really emphasizing your hip hinge movement and you're going push 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 and as soon as you feel those hamstrings begin to engage you go a little bit further down to about mid shin and then you're coming straight back up you don't you want to avoid going too low where basically your hamstrings give out and your lower back takes over you can kind of see that when someone's doing that Nice work, Rach. And you'll see though with Rachel, her glutes and hamstrings stay on the entire time. There's no curvature. Her neck's neutral to her spine. And she's performing the movement with a really nice tempo. We're not going too fast. All right, so we're going in for our second warm up set. We're going at 70% effort for this one and eight reps. So our reps have dropped. We've increased the weight a little bit. We've added 2.5 kilos aside and we're hitting slightly less reps. So again, focusing on an appropriate tempo, not going too fast, slight pause at the bottom without staying there too long and really focusing on pushing those glutes back, hip hinging through the movement. And that's why the hip hinges in the warm up are so important. They really help nice and controlled, perfect. That's it, down, down, down and up, perfect. Keeping your core nice and engaged. Killing it, my turn. So we're doing our primary exercise. We're about to start with our barbell RDLs, proper working set. We have a pyramid set here. So that basically means you're doing a series of reps that decrease in reps and increase in weight and then goes back up in reps and decreases in weight. So we have eight, six, four, four being our heaviest weight, four, six, eight. So to start with, you'll see Rachel's gone back to her initial warm-up weight because we're going to be going nice and light on the bar. And then we're going to be increasing our weight as our reps decrease. So with this, keeping in mind it's a lot of reps, 
and it's a very long working set period. So you want to make sure you're choosing a weight that's appropriate that allows you to finish the exercise in the working set. You're also going to add a two second pause at the bottom of each rep. So maybe about 10 to 20 seconds. Transition rest. It's a, this is a massive working set. Honestly, with the pause and the pyramid and the weight increase, if you need a little bit of extra rest during your transition, feel free to take it, but you do want to keep yourself working. So you'll see Rachel goes down, perfect RDL, stopping mid shin, coming back up after that pause. So coming back down, one, two, and she's coming back up. Her core's nice and tight. Her glutes are taking the load as well as her hamstrings. She's really driving back up through that movement. She's not overextending her lower back. You can see the struggle, girls. I do not envy her right now. This is hard work. I'm gonna go over and quickly help her load her weight. A level three build is our most advanced program. So <laughs> it's very advanced in that you need 12 plus months of experience. Which is why I have level one and level two. Thank everyone. And you'll see, it's an, it, it is the exercise to a degree, but it's also how the exercise is performed. So the pyramid set, the increase in weight, the tempo demands, they're all adding to the intensity of this working set. You can hear Rachel breathing through it. Nice work, girl. Perfect. Two to go, two to go. Perfect pause. One more hip hinging straight through, mid shin, and pushing back through those glutes and hamstrings. Nice work. Going back up now. Having that little bit of rest, you'll see Rachel's using straps. So we often get a lot of questions around um, the straps we wear around our wrists. They basically help us carry the load in our upper body because generally speaking, our lower body is a lot stronger than our upper body. And sometimes our grip strength goes before our lower body does. Straps basically just help with that. So we're going into four. Oh, I can see her hamstring shaking. I don't know if you can see that on thing, but I can see it. Two. Now it's going to feel really hard and you're going to want to ditch the pause. Don't do it to yourself. Keep going, keep going. She's got one more. Keeping that core nice and tight. Nice work, Rach. All right, dropping back. So now we have six reps. I know for a fact Rachel's really questioning <laughs> her programming right now. Tony, Tony, we've worked with Tony a lot and he is honestly an incredible coach. The experience he has in the industry, the time he's been in the industry. True, nice work. Three, keeping that core nice and tight and protecting that lower back. Four, you'll notice that Rachel's not allowing herself to stretch, to swing. She's not allowing her back to curve. She's, her upper body is tight. This is a full body movement to the extent, nice work girl, that you do have to keep your upper body nice and solid. It's, it's protecting your neck, it's protecting your lower back. Last set, that's it. <laughs> then we get a nice big rest after this, I think it's two minutes. Two minute rest before we go into the next. So it's just one set here, guys. One set. <laughs> one set with a lot of reps. So you'll see she goes in, picks the bar up correctly, no spine curvature, and RDL actually starts at the top and you lower into the movement. Eight. Seven, nice work. Pushing back, following that hip hinge movement pattern, keeping those heels nice and solid. You should, with an RDL, be able to wiggle your toes whilst you're doing the movement in that you're not putting any pressure on the front of your foot so much. It's all through the heel drive. 
Your front foot stabilizes, but it should be able to kind of move. You'll see Rachel's little toes moving. Where are we at? Where are we at? Oh, nice work, girl. I'm scared. <laughs> Guys, just quietly, I don't know if you can see how much I'm sweating <laughs> just from literally doing RDLs. So, Emma's into her set now. Pause. Nice. <sighs> Brutal. I'm taking all the rest I can. <laughs> So now we're going into 45 degree back extensions. We're starting with dual legs and then going to single legs, eight together and then eight each leg. Rachel and Hattie actually kind of went into depth on how to do this with a glute focus in the last YouTube they did together, which was all on how to target the upper glute. So if you're wanting more kind of description on exactly how to perform these, because a lot of people do perform them differently, you can jump into that YouTube and check it out. We also so, want to be hitting the hands in this though, like, so it's not just glute focused, and you should also feel a lot of this through the hamstrings. What you want to avoid is feeling it through your lower back too much. No lower back. So you'll see that Rachel started with a plate for her boat dual leg, and then she's dropped the plate for single legs. Woo! And by now you should really be feeling that burn all through your glute and all through your hammy. All sets. All sets, yeah. So this is what we're speaking about when we mention accessory work. So we had our primary movement being the barbell RDL, and now we're going into accessory work to kind of really finish off the area that we were working. You will feel a little bit fatigued, that's very normal. Um, you'll see Rachel maintains a neutral spine, a neutral neck, and she's not swinging. It's so easy to swing through this movement. She's got a light pause and a tiny squeeze at the top of each rep, zero rushing. Woo! Okay, so we are now moving on to back. Sorry if there's a little bit of noise, guys. It has decided to start raining. So we have a, the same principle here, the same method. We're doing a pyramid set. We're going eight, six, four, four, six, eight. So we're starting at a lighter weight and increasing as our reps decrease. So there is a two second pause at the top. Hold for two. So we're pausing at the peak of the movement. Nice, Em. So she's got eight reps there. You can see her core's on, nice neutral spine. Perfect. She's really pulling her elbows back. So we don't want to be pulling the barbell up. We want to be pulling it back into our belly button like we're rowing a boat. Row that boat, sisters. All right, good M. So now she's going into six reps. So guys, you'll notice like this is, um, I think this is in the first fort fortnight of the program. So week one and two are the same. So you'll notice that, or you'll hope that maybe in week two, you are more comfortable to really understand where your rep range, uh, sorry, where your load will, will sit for each um, rep range. And it will allow you to increase if you feel you can. Good, make sure you're pausing, really squeezing. Perfect. Good, nice job, Em. So Emma's just going up in five kilo increments, so 2.5 a side. So she started with just the bar and then she's moved to 2.5 a side and now five a side. Four reps, you got this. You got this. Let's go. So she's safely picking up the bar. The one benefit about using bumper plates is is getting the bar up um, the problem with these smaller weights is you know you're at a quite you're at a very low um, range when picking up the barber which can be a little bit dangerous so you can always roll the weight on two bumper plates if you feel um, picking it up can hurt your lower back or rack it yeah exactly good Em so she's resting so you're aiming for about 10 to 20 seconds but as Emma said if you need a little bit of extra rest you can take it yeah, same. Yeah. And I can, I know as soon as I fatigue too much, my reps fail, and I end up like that's when I can injure myself. You can tell I'm. Oh, 
Let's go. Good, six. So make sure you're pausing guys, just like the RDLs, as you fatigue, the first thing that he's gonna wanna go is that pause. Um, and obviously keeping technique. Super, super important. You got this. You got this. <laughs> I know, and I'm gonna come up and show you guys Emma's back when she's doing these last eight reps. <laughs> no pressure. All right, let's go. Come on, you got this. Good. Perfect, Dan. All the way. Pause. Look at that back. Wow. Emma has the best upper body. Yeah. Nice job. You. Okay, so our last superset, we have hand assisted pull ups into 15 dumbbell bicep curls. So I'm going to help Emma here. Okay, let's go. Oh, she needs assistance. That's the job. One, let's go. Two. Don't rush it, control. From the elbows, good. So what you want to make sure here. That's so hard. Too heavy? Yeah. Because <laughs> obviously guys, balls or threes? Ah, uh, balls please. We don't do much bicep work. So oh, little, sorry, that was yeah, a lot of bicep work. We're using a lot of biceps when we're doing back. So we want to really stay nice and firm through here and control all the way out, control the rep. What are we at? Come on, let's push. Good. Come on, you got this. Nine. <laughs> You're counting for me. <laughs> Good, you got this. Come on. Eleven. Good. Come on. Twelve. Thirteen. Two. All right. Two go. Talking inside. <laughs> Go, you got this. Push. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining that workout. That is a bikini build 3.0. So as we said, there is levels one, two, and three. You can sign up to our challenge now. Access on the 18th. Last challenge of the year, starting yeah. on the 25th. Um, but thank you for joining us, guys. Emma's gonna head home and show you her breakfast. I have an appointment, so I'm gonna sign off here. But I'm thinking, what do you guys want to see from me next? I feel like maybe it's it's a what I eat in what a day. Eat in a day? It's been a little bit. Or maybe what I do in a day, like a full day of like what I'm doing. That Let me know. Let us know if you want to see anything specifically. But otherwise, let's go get some breakfast. Let's go eat. I'm home and I've just made my post-workout meal. I'm going to show you what I'm having. I'm seriously addicted to this meal. I've been having it for like months so with my post workout you'll see that it's pretty calorie dense i do most of the time train faster because i train in the morning so with that i do like to have a pretty just calorie dense wholesome meal after i finish training because i haven't had anything to eat yet so my meals got 
every single macro so it's very protein fats and carb balanced and I just make sure I'm having enough so that I'm nice and satisfied after hitting a super hard session and just setting myself up for the day so that I'm consuming enough and not too hungry after having just eaten so I'll show you what I have let me spin you around here we have a bagel I have 60 grams of avocado I've put a few tomatoes in with some sliced turkey breast. I'm also just sipping on my juice, which is celery, cucumber, kale, spinach, romaine, lettuce, lemon, and chlorophyll. And also I have over here some oats with Biscoff and just a little bit of almond milk. Just for reference, these, I get these oats. So they're already flavored, which saves a lot of time and effort and I'm like seriously addicted and they come in little sachets so easy portions sometimes I have two sometimes I have one today I just had one but I hope you did enjoy today's vlog I hope that you enjoyed sis and I you know getting back to vlogging again let us know what you want to see more of let us know if there's something you would like us to vlog in particular we love getting on and doing this we just sometimes like don't know what to do or what you'd like to see so the more you help us the better but right now your girl is going to go and have her meal and then she's going to get stuck into the rest of her work day <laughs> until next time girls i hope you enjoyed the vlog and love you